Up to this point, we have been talking about conventional power supplies. However, in inverter technology, we generally find more complex power supplies, switched mode power supplies. What do we mean by that? We refer to systems that transform electricity, modify it, and leave it ready to work. But they are more complex and more efficient. Basically, this change was made for the following reason. We are going to open a new board and start talking about switched mode power supplies. The main reason is that here we have less hysteresis losses. We will not complicate ourselves too much explaining this because it is not relevant, but to explain it in a simple way, you remember that these transformers were always heating up, always heating up. If you touched them, they were always hot. This is due to hysteresis loss, a resistance that iron exerts on the circulation of electrons, to say it in a simple way. Today, these switched mode power supplies do not have hysteresis losses because the material with which the transformer is made is no longer iron, but ferrite. And that helps us in this aspect of not having hysteresis losses. In addition, another reason why manufacturers started creating these switched mode power supplies is that they also save on materials because now the transformers are much smaller. Those large and heavy transformers are no longer available today, and what we have is this. In a complex power supply, notice that we have the transformer the size of how many? Not even an inch. They are more complex. For us they may complicate us a little more, but they can be understood very well in any case. Now, let's gradually understand how they work. Today, we do not have the same circuit that we had analyzed. We do not have the same thing in a switched mode power supply. We have the components, but in a different order, and that is what we want now. In a switched mode power supply, we will have a voltage input, a fuse, a varistor, a double pi filter. You already know how all this works. After that we go directly to that component that you already know how it works. A rectifier and a filter. The big difference is here. In a conventional power supply, we go to a transformer, we reduce the voltage and then we go to the rectifier, that's why we enter with 12 and we come out with 17 in direct current. In a switched mode power supply, we go directly to the rectifier with 220 volts in alternating current or 110 or 127. And we come out with a rectified of 310, 155 or 180. Be careful with these switched mode power supplies, because since you are already seeing that we are working with very high voltage, we have to be more careful when working with these power supplies. That is why these capacitors, the diodes are not, they are usually the same 1N4007, but these capacitors are yes of more voltage, because they store much more electron power. Pay attention to this detail. In the next module, I'll explain capacitors and their characteristics, but right now, I'll continue explaining switched mode power supplies. So, what are we going to find now? We'll find a small gate. There's a detail that I don't know if you've already noticed or observed. I told you that any transformer has to work with alternating current, so the question is, if we had an alternating current of 50 or 60 hertz here, and we still have to go to a transformer, why would we rectify it and end up with 0 hertz, if we need alternating current for this transformer to be able to reduce the voltage? Indeed. As these ferrite transformers are so efficient and do not store heat or do not prevent electrons from flowing from one side to the other, we can do the following. Instead of giving it 50 or 60 hertz, we take it to zero. And with this switch or gate, 
we take it back up again, but now with much higher frequency to be able to have much more output power in a much smaller place. So, at this point, thanks to this switch or gate, you'll find a frequency of 90 to 140 kilohertz. What do I mean by kilohertz? 90 kilohertz are 90,000 hertz. Imagine that the electrons are excited from one side to the other at that speed per second very quickly. In a much smaller space, the same power can be supplied from the other side. That's the goal of switched mode power supplies. But how does this happen? How does all this effect happen? Let's look at it this way to understand it. We have a flow of electrons here, which pushes towards here and an output towards there because this is direct current with this component that is a gate that opens and closes commanded by another circuit, which we will discuss later, this component that opens and closes, what it will do is send electrons and let them stop passing. It sends electrons, they stop passing. It sends electrons, they stop passing. But what happens? When I send electrons from this side and make them stop passing, the electrons charged in the coil, they will circulate towards this side crossing this bridge that you have here. This bridge is a diode. It allows them to pass to this side, but not to this. So I let them pass and they circulate towards this side. I cut the flow of electrons. The electrons that are charged in the coil, or that the coil is generating at that moment, as we discussed today, and that every coil generates electricity or pushes electrons, these electrons that are here push them to the opposite side and they are discharged through the diode. Thanks to that, you constantly have inputs, outputs, inputs, outputs of electrons and a kind of alternating current is produced, but with a very high frequency, a frequency of 90,000 to 140,000 times per second. And that same thing comes out from the other side, but now yes, with a reduced voltage. On the other side, we don't have 310 anymore, but on the other side of this transformer we'll have 5 volts, always with a current, always with an alternating current, but with a very high frequency, which is no longer a sinusoidal and rather square this alternating current. It no longer has that sinusoidal format, but it doesn't matter, it's the same. As these transformers are so efficient, they allow manufacturers to put more outputs. They can have an output of 5, they can have another of 12, they can have another of 15, because they are very efficient, they work very well, and with so much speed, you can create what you want from the other side. All this allows these transformers. A component that they avoid putting is the 7805 because they can have several output voltages directly. The five volts are created directly after the transformer. This is very interesting. This detail is very interesting to understand and understand how they save money in other ways. Now, the question is the following. We want to see this component. We want to see it. We want to see the transformer on a board and we'll see it now.